Hey, this is Dave Pryor. We're live at Agile 2018 here in the Leading Agile booth. We're doing interviews all week long with speakers and thought leaders and other folks that are making Agile happen. And right now, Kara Turner's here. Kara, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, you did a talk on Tuesday called Codex, the Codex story challenging the metrics that limit diversity in the software industry. And it's the story of Project Codex, right? Is that how you say it? That's how we say it. Okay. We typically just say Codex. Okay. Um, yes, we were. The, the talk I did specifically on Tuesday is about areas that we found that are around the processes, the hidden processes and policies in place okay. that limit how people get into the software industry uh, be, that appear to be about merit and meritocracy right. that are really about if you don't come from a certain kind of background, you don't have you access to a certain, yes, like math and science teaching to it, affluent communities tend to have really good access to excellent math and science teaching okay. and under resourced communities tend to have a much lower quality of education available to them okay. and so if you use that as a filter as to who gets into tertiary education you've literally kind of cut out a large amount of the uh, okay. potential participants and it's got nothing to do with ability, right. it's to do with access. And what and what infrastructure is provided for them as yes. they're growing up. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain to the folks that are watching what what Codex is sure. and how it works? Sure. So Codex is a tertiary level one year program. We have we train full stack web app uh, development and it's an agile first curriculum. Okay. It's built the, the principles we built the curriculum on is are fully agile. It's okay. entirely custom built. I came from an agile coach perspective with a deep understanding of things like uh, deliberate discovery, systems thinking, complexity science. So okay. looking beyond just stories and the the, the structures. Practice of Scrum or whatever. Yes. To how what are the things we need to do to make impactful change? Okay. And um, so the. The way in which we developed the curriculum was in partnership with people who are in relationships we already have with people in the industry. Um, so it's evolved over time to become quite deep, pretty okay. deep. Uh, and we are able to take people who are brand new to tech through a one-year course. It's two 18-month terms. Uh, and working at their own pace, we, we can self-pace education, which is fantastic okay. because... Everybody learns at a different speed. Exactly, yeah. and there are things that happen in, uh, particularly in the under-resourced communities. There are much more challenges to face on a daily basis. So somebody might go through a bad patch in a university environment if they miss a week of lectures. That's it. Yeah. Uh, in our case, we're like, come back when you're ready and keep going. Okay. And the motivation that that creates and the, the commitment, we have a, a lot of. Uh, we have very little absenteeism, and very little. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot so of commitment. So they're more bought into it, more engaged. And yes, it's their journey. Right. It's we don't. They we, make a choice. Yes, they're, they're, and they're very committed to being there. There will always be some people who aren't, but right. early on, we're like, it seems like this isn't the route for you. If okay. something is not working out well, we'll be. We'll, I'm an honest conversation over measuring by, you know. Yeah. You, you, Deal with an exception. Have an open policy and deal with problems by exception. Okay. Now, yeah. when you say, uh, I want to talk about the mentoring part in a second, right. but I just want to make sure that the folks who are, who are watching understand. When you say under-resourced, I'm going to try to say it delicately. So apartheid ended like 30 years ago, technically. Yeah. But culturally, that's going to take a long time to filter its way through all the different systems that are in place. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the non-white community might not be afforded the same opportunities from an educational perspective or whatever. So you're reaching out to that community and trying to bring them into what is, I would assume, a mostly white male dominated workforce in IT. Yes. Okay. Um, the, there's been, it's been a very, very slow transformation. And the yeah. word transformation is even hard. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a very slow change. Yeah. And uh, we work with people who are still living in the shanty town environments. Okay. Um, what I'm really pleased about is 
when you're, one of the reasons we need diversity in tech is that tech needs to be built by people who are going to consume it. It's pointless me wow. making okay. something for you and coming and saying, hey Dave, I've made you this yes. thing, How aren't this? you lucky? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you look at it and you're like, why? Yeah. <laughs> so for tech to be built by people who are actually going to consume it, okay. in under-resourced communities, that's almost unheard of because the access to skills is yeah. so limited. So we've got graduates who are still living in those communities, that's where families are, that's where it support and infrastructure. Yeah. The, the, it's poor infrastructure, but it's the, it's the family and the support base right. is there. Um, and then, so to build that skill into the community, I think I want to see in 10 years time, okay. a fundamental change in who's making tech in that space and what kind of things they're making 20 years time, right. which is will be probably beyond my involvement, but I'd love to see what's happening there. I want to make that long change. Yeah. So that that's a big part of the vision. Okay. Obviously in the early, at the moment, that that economy or sub-economy doesn't exist. How yet. long have you guys been doing it? Four years. Okay. Uh, at the moment, we are, we place people in, uh, companies within the Cape Town community and also some in Joburg, uh, okay. a little bit, but mostly in the Cape Town area, that's where we're based. We've got, I think, 60 grads over the last three years oh, wow. who are actively, who are working in Cape Town, who have okay. changed the so face of it, yeah, that's starting awesome. to be very present. It's got to be really rewarding to see the fruits of your efforts start to kind of find its way in. It's phenomenal, it really is. And there are a lot of things that are not easy that we do. Yeah. But when a grad comes back and sits in, alongside a mayor, one of our current intake and mentors them and has a conversation, we, we kind of have a saying that you can check out of Codex, but you'll never leave. It's okay. home. So you maintain a relationship. It, we've got a really high trust relationship with our candidates. Okay. We start with them by trusting you are here you have awesome potential. We're here to give you the tools you need to go into industry and make the impact you wow. can make. Uh, and it's very, it's, it's very high trust, That's and great. we have a consequently very high return. Okay. Yes. So, can you um, comment on how the mentoring works, and, and if that extends beyond their graduation? Because I, when I was looking at the site to get ready for the interview, I noticed that that was called out as part of how you engage with them. There are a couple of ways in which mentoring work. We have on staff a, a graduate, we've always employed our graduates okay. to mentor, so that we have first language mentoring uh, in Isikosa, which is the predominant language of our coders, okay. and also the language of Black Panther of Wakanda. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. Our coders were very, and our, uh, the South Africans <laughs> are very happy to go and see that movie. That's cool. Yes, it is. Um, so first language mentoring means that you can pick up a concept in your home language. Yeah. It's much easier than trying to do it in a second or third language. Yeah. So you can pick it up, explain it to the person alongside you. When you give it words, you understand it more deeply. Right. Um, and then you can translate, then you can translate it back to, into English. Okay. And so it's, 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 it's a double loop of learning. Okay. And then you apply it, or you apply it, you express it, you apply it, you express it. Yeah. So it's very, uh, things like doing the daily stand-ups and the weekly demos and the weekly retrospective yeah. give words to tacit experiences. So okay. at the beginning of the year, people know very little about software. And it's hard, it, I mean, it's a really hard industry to yeah. get depth of knowledge in. Especially if you're going for the full stack, because people yes. would start out in one space or the other, and then how do I cross the bridge? So we have a really nice approach that, uh, well, I like it. Okay. <laughs> um, built on agile principles, I was always, right from the start, you're going to demo. Okay. First week, so at the end of first week, you're going to demo. The first day you come in, you're going to write code. Wow. So we have a boot camp now that assesses skill before people are accepted into the program. Okay. But even before that, on the first day, they would do HTML and start to build little, just a website. Yeah. And then it's a website that's responsive. Then okay. it's using a framework that makes it responsive. Then it holds data and it's, it's a, so it's a like little bit of... it's an iterative approach to learning as exactly, well. Exactly. The entire curriculum, it's, it's, so it's incremental, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then it's fundamentally iterative as yeah. we've got a baseline and then you're like, okay, now we can take this into a new space. Wow. That's so it, cool. Yes, it is. Wow. I enjoy um, it. 
how are you, how long do you think it will be before the diversity that you're trying to promote actually permeates the workforce? Or like, what kind of uptick are you seeing in that? We have a 70% placement rate, somewhere between okay. 70 and 75. The, it's the software industry, and 60 yeah. is not a large number. Um, well, any debt is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Over time, um, I want that to be a much bigger number, obviously. Okay. Um, I think there's a, a couple of things. We work with industry uh, with companies to help on board. South Africa okay. has a very uh, high risk, a low risk tolerance, employing uh, the companies have a low risk tolerance, and they expect okay. a very high level of junior. Okay. And that can work for people who come out in an affluent environment, but honestly, it doesn't work well anyway. So people graduate and they struggle to find work after three years of study. Very little practical application yeah. and no, and uh, very little workplace experience. Yeah, so you're not just talking about the coding, but you're talking about how you show up at work, how you interact with people. Yes. Especially if it's a slightly different culture than you're used to. So even, I've got one of, one of the employers from a local uh, bank subsidiary uh, will only hire our grads. Wow. They won't hire um, university grads because You've because we're agile experience. yeah we're yeah. agile first they fit easily into an agile team they're going to go into a nurturing environment and they're able to pick up tasks immediately they know how to collaborate wow. they're built where I, I place from the start a very strong emphasis on servant leadership okay as as teams start to form and the, you know like personalities start yeah. hitting we'll do the focus on focus off exercise of focus on dialogue rather than debate Okay. Um, thing, and we kind of talk about the difference between these words and what, what it means. So sometimes you land up in debate and sometimes yeah. you land up advocating. So it, it, but there, there's a purpose for it, but it's not an inclusive conversation typically. Okay. So then they kind of go through that. And then there's a deepening of the way they interact. Okay. And then later on, there's another feeling as people try to gain position. And then we look at the Tuckman model of forming, norming, storming. and Kind of showing really what what learn, le servant leadership is yeah. and how you can work in a team. That's awesome. And when our coders go in, they are. I mean, sometimes they go into very hectic um, uh, corporate environments, yeah. and they're like, I don't understand why well, they're doing this stuff, Carl. Yes, I'm like, I don't really understand why they're doing it either. But let me tell you something about that, and that's okay. where mentoring beyond the program really helps. So as they're getting their legs on their jobs, you're still coaching them and helping them. Absolutely. So okay. th we, there are things I wish I'd been, had somebody to turn to when I entered the industry. Yeah. You're just kind of making stuff up as you go along. I mean, that along. would be great for anybody to have somebody to help them with that. So to be able to, somebody to sit down and go, this is happening and I don't know why. <laughs> And then you kind of go, it sounds like those people, is there a, is there a pressure deadline yeah. coming up? And I'm like, yes, there is. I'm like, okay, so in that situation, people's focus is a little bit different. And, you know, you'll find after I, that... Anybody would benefit from this. Which is, it, well, yes. Uh, and I would have loved to have had it. And yeah. I'm really enjoying being able Share to offer it. People. I also mentor Scrum Masters in the Cape Town community okay. just because I've been part of the community for so long. And it's, it's a very healthy supportive community okay. but it, it's a real real treat for me when I'm working with somebody who's new to tech yeah. new to the environment a little bit fresh out of water right. I mean I will, also one of the problems we do have is that people don't because they're going into organizations which are pretty affluent also English and Afrikaans Afrikaans is a much harder language to get to if you've grown up speaking one of the indigenous languages okay. um, and there's a lot of political distrust. There and I would are, imagine that there's still hangover from apartheid and, and everything. I mean, that yes, doesn't it, just go it, away. And it hasn't. Yeah. There is space for people who didn't want it there or don't want it there. There's a lot more space for people to act and act, but there hasn't been a really forced... I mean, how do you force... Yeah, you can't. you got to kind of got to bleed it out of the system or grow it out of the system. Maybe. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of promoting excellence hasn't really been a thing. The first few years of government, of the new government, there was a lot of emphasis on uh, 
growing the infrastructure, building out um, the amounts of areas that didn't have access to water and electricity in 1994, yeah. which is not really the Middle Ages. Like yeah. At that time, it was very low and very heavy. Now, it is, there are still communities in that situation. Okay. There are fewer, but so there was a big drive early on. Then we had a political a change of leadership where focus went off infrastructure. Zuma is not a popular and was not a popular. Right. Uh, his focus certainly wasn't on infrastructure okay. and growing things. So that slowed down what could have been done, and you know there needs to be political will. Yeah. And I am of the opinion that I have no control over political will. Never going to be in that space. But where I can do, well, what can I can do, yeah. do everything you can. Okay. Um, so that's been... That's awesome. Yeah. Have you seen any of the people that have gone through your program take the Agile practices back to their communities and start to use them to maybe work with their communities or develop anything? So not at a community... Oh, uh, yeah, there are actually a couple like, of organizations... Like practicing at home or practicing with a volunteer organization? Oddly enough, yeah. we, the stories we hear are more of where they go into work, where the okay. agile practices aren't as deep as they as may they appear on the outside. Okay. <laughs> and they're like, why aren't we using this Kanban board? I, I need, I need so Kara, can I get my Kanban board? Yes, and wow. they're, because they're agile first, they don't know project management and okay. they don't know metering by punishment. Yeah. Ask me my opinions on these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they know um, self, they can guess for themselves in a week by the time it comes to the end of the um, program what they can accomplish in terms of the projects are all set as challenges, or the learning is all set in projects. Large amounts, as we said, was incremental. Yeah. Last project you did this, so you have to you repeat it, and there'll be one extra skill to learn in the next project. Okay. Um, and they'll be able by the end of the, the year to guess what a week they'll be able to accomplish in a week. Okay. So it's not planning by deadline, but a week is a deadline. Yeah. I know that I can probably do this. Okay. And sometimes I'll do more, and sometimes I'll do less, and I'll understand why. Okay. So their skill level, that they, they have a high level of self-trust. So yeah. I, and I'm very careful about being, and, and, and very deliberate about being agile first, because if they trust themselves, yeah, it's the self -esteem thing when well. they go into an environment where it doesn't work the same and somebody says, you don't know what you're doing, they know the that trust, they do. the foundation of like self, it, it, yeah, there's no, it, the, people start doubting themselves, but it's not eroded, and they get on the phone and they say, Kara, can I come What's and chat that? with you? Okay. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you one more question, just because of what you just said about the, the traditional way of working. And I have a deep background. There. Before I came to Agile, it was all waterfall, top PMP, all that stuff. And when people ask me now if, like, I'm starting to get students in class who don't, they've never done waterfall, and they want to know, should I learn this or should I go get PMP? And the way I always explain it is, I, I have found that to be incredibly valuable. I don't work that way anymore but I can speak a language and I understand a mindset. Maybe it's not healthy, but it's easier for me to have empathy for those folks. Mm. Do you think, how does that work out with the students? Because they might go in a place that says it's agile, but it's really like, not so much. Um, is that harder for them to kind of cope with that? Would it, Is, is it ever beneficial so, to learn the language of the enemy so that you can come back? I would say absolutely okay. it is beneficial. In the course of a year, you know that what I want to do is set a pattern that says this thing works and it okay. is excellent. And, you and when you encounter, it. and you can trust it, and when you encounter another environment, you'll be able to try, uh, uh, adjust, okay. but you have a foundation from which you can grow. I, when I first encountered Scrum was 2008 and I was a project manager and uh, one of the guys on my team said to me, we were doing this thing, said, I don't mind Cara, put it on a list and call it a backlog. And I said to him, backlog? It's a bit of a negative word, isn't it? And he said, D don't worry about it, just put it on a list, prioritize it and give it to me. I'm like, fine. Okay. And it was a very lovely way to go about it. And then I started doing a project management diploma and it was a six months IT PM uh, thing. 
and it ended in October of 2009. Okay. And in beginning of October, shortly before that, the company decided they were going, all going to be scrummy and they sent all the you know, project managers on Scrum Master Training, the CSM. Okay. Um, and so I was studying for the project management uh, exam at the same time that I did the two-day course. That must have been fun. Well, my <laughs> issue has always been with monitoring and controlling. Okay. I can't do it. Yeah. I don't want to sit over your shoulder and say, what are you up to? And the project uh, yeah. office want you to be able to do that right. and I'm like I, I found a workaround that worked okay for me by just getting everybody in a room and saying okay So you okay, were already folks. in that mindset anyway, the admin mindset anyway? Yes, okay. without being um, without being conscious of, I, I, I found a way to cheat the system on a yeah. thing I didn't like and there was this two day course that goes, ah, oh, this is where all the yeah, monitoring yeah. and controlling is, it's in the visibility and the self right responsibility so it was a really nice I will never have been able to do that any other way with the only thing that could yeah. have etc but I like the fact that I saw them very closely together at that time okay and um, I it's valuable to me to know project management like you know what an unhealthy diet is and a healthy <laughs> diet and you can feel the difference yeah. Yeah. You can feel it intrinsically. Yeah. You say, this feels right and good. If you want to eat McDonald's, go ahead. You can do I'm it. Not going with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and if I'm going to have to sit down while you're eating the McDonald's and talk with you and stuff, that's fine too. We might have more fun. <laughs> if you didn't eat the poison. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I'm, it's not the analogy I want. If I'm going to need to work with somebody in a project management office, yeah. I can do it. I understand it, but I'm also no hoping, choice. yes, that there are, we can find ways of working. And I know I have experience of working nicely with with a team yeah. within that safe space. It's not you know necessarily, a better way. Yes. So I, I'm not somebody who says my client has walked full, I have to be walked full, so my client has walked full, that's fine, we'll give them these dates and we'll work on that cadence. Oh, okay. they're only two weeks apart, isn't that interesting? So, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So if people want to learn more about the work that you're doing, what's yes. your best way to do that? There's a website, Twitter and Facebook. We have yeah. uh, accounts, we tweet as sporadically and, and uh, we have quite a lot of engagement from local companies. That's what I want to say about uh, mentors. Um, yeah. That our grads go out into industry, but also c companies in the area, um, individual uh, developers as well, just kind of come and sit and spend time with the coders. Wow. So when we have, and when, uh, people so you're coming building and talk. the community as well beyond It's a network, the exactly. Okay. So I know Dave when I go in and so meet that, him. And that's a big career benefit for them. Absolutely. So it's like there. you're connected to somebody, you know people, they'll Teaching support them to you. Teaching them to be self-sustaining in their careers. Yes. That's really and in cool. five years' time, those people will be the people you know. We've got three yeah. people who started startups. Anyway, so we tend to post those kinds of events and presences on okay. Twitter and Facebook. But the website is projectcodex.co. Uh, co, right. Right. Not .com, not .coz. And that's in the show notes. Is it? Yes. Excellent. And for uh, for Twitter, I just have your Twitter handle. Is that? Is, and then there's at project underscore codex okay. as well. Okay. And yours is at Kara underscore Fay, F-A-Y-E. Is correct, okay. yes. This is great. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. And thank you for the work that you've done. Um, keep watching. We're going to be doing these all day long. It's like day 75 of the Agile Conference. We'll be live all day. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>